Good day everyone. We're going to discuss the rules of softball. Since we're done discussing the 1 to 4 rules of softball. Now, let's proceed to the rules of softball from, five, from number 5 to number 8. And, and, yes of course, I'm the presenter, Aljim B. Dominguez. Rule number five, the game. So first is section number one, choice of turn at bat. The choice of turn at or last bat in the inning shall be decided by a toss of a coin, unless otherwise stated in the rules of organization under which the schedule of a game is being played. Ayun nga sa uling uh, inning, so shall be they decided to have a toss of a coin. Yan, kung meron si um, saan ang pagpipilian nila. But, unless otherwise stated in the rules of organization under which a schedule of games is being played. Ayun na nga. So, section number 2, fitness of ground. The fitness of the ground for a game shall be decided slowly with the plate umpire. Ayun na nga. So, so, section 3, regulation of the game. Regulation of game shall consist of 7 innings. These are First, full 7 innings need not be played if the team second up bat scores more runs in 6 innings or before the third out in the last of 7 innings. A game that is tied at the end of 7 innings shall be continued by playing additional innings or until one side has scored more runs than the other at the end of complete innings or until the team second at bat has scored more runs in their half of the inning before the third out is made. So, section number four, winner of the game. The winner of the game shall be the team that scores more runs in a regulation. Yes, of course, they will determine natin kung panalo, kung sino yung waiter, kung sino yung Mas maraming score. Sa kanila, ang tinatawag ng more runs in the regulation. Section number 5, run ahead rule. A run ahead rule shall be used at a tournament or championships. As the only team runs after 3 to innings, 10 runs after 4 innings, or 7 runs after 5 innings. The SP or the starting player only the 20 runs after 4 innings or 15 team runs after 5 innings. So B, complete innings must be played unless the team second at the bat scores or the required number of the runs while a bat when the team first at bat reaches the required number of runs in the top half of the innings. The team second at bat must have the opportunity to bat in the bottom half of the inning. In section number 6, the tiebreaker, starting with the top of the 8th inning, and each half inning thereafter, the off uh, offensive team shall begin a turn at bat with the player who is scheduled to bat in 9th in FP, and the first player, 10, 10th in SP, 11th in SP, or starting player with the first aid team, the extra player, or 12th in the whole SP, the starting player with the extra players, of innings to be played at second base and take note that the player who is running can be substituted in accordance with the substitution rules in section number seven scoring of runs yeah one run shall be scored each time runners legally touches first second third bases home Paid for third out of the inning. So exemption, we have the tiebreaker is issued. The runner starting the second base does not have to touch first base in other legal run to be scored. A run shall be not be scored or the third and last out of the inning is a result of yes, one, two, three, four.
In section A, charge conferences. So first is letter A, the offensive conferences. There shall only be one charge offensive conference in an inning. Take note that this is includes the battle runner on deck better the coaches among themselves. Number two, it is not charge conference when a pitcher is putting a warm up jacket while on base, or if this the offense confers with a defensive team is conference provided the offense is ready to play when the defense is ready. So the effect in is from the section eight, the second charge conference shall be result injection from manager coach insisting one another charge conference. Let there be defensive conferences. There shall be only three charge defensive conferences in a seven inning game. For every inning beyond seven, there shall be one charge conference per inning. Since we're done discussing rule number five, the softball, let's proceed to rule number six, pitching regulations. Or fast pitch only. So first is section number one, preliminaries. Before commencing the delivery, pitch the pitcher. A shall not be considered in pitching position unless the catcher is in position to receive the pitch. B must take the position with both feet firmly on the ground and with one or both feet in the contact with the pitcher's plate. C must come to a full and complete stop with the ball held in one or both hands in front of the body. The front of the body must face the batter. This position must be held for not less than one second and not more than 10 seconds before starting the delivery. Section number two is starting the pitch. Letter A, the pitch starts when the pitcher makes any motion that is part of his wind up after required stop prior to the required stop, any motion may be used. Yeah. In section number three, legal delivery, the pitcher must not make any motion to pitch without immediately delivering the ball to the batter. B, the wind up must be continuous motion and the pitcher must not use the wind up in which there is stop or reversal of the forward motion. Lastly, the pitcher must deliver the ball toward home plane on the first forward swing of the pitching arm passing the hip with an underhand dead motion. Section number four, defensive positioning. The pitcher shall not deliver a pitch unless a deliver defensive player except the catcher who must be in a catcher's box or position in a fair territory. B. A filler shall not take a position of the batter's line of vision or we deliberate on sportsman's life intent after one of the instructions. But take note a pitch does not have to be released. The offending player shall be ejected from the game. Section number five, foreign substance. A, no, no member of the defensive team shall at any time during the game be permitted to use any foreign substance on the ball. But take note, if any defensive team member continues to place a foreign substance on the ball, the pitcher shall be ejected from the game. Section number six, the catcher. In the catcher's box until the pitch ball is paddled, touches the ground, plate or batter, or reaches the catcher box. B. Shall return the ball directly to the pitcher after each pitch, including after a foul ball. Exemption This does not apply after a strikeout or put out made by the catcher. Section number seven, quick pitch. The pitcher shall not attempt a quick return of the ball. So first we have the before the batter is taking his position or hand the batter is off balance as a result of a pitch. Section number eight, intentional base on balls. If the defensive team decide to have an intentional base on balls awarded to a batter, either the pitcher, a catcher, or a coach may be do so by notifying the plate umpire who shall award the batter first 
base this notification to the umpire shall be considered a pitch the ball is and but take note this is not this is can occur at any time prior to be bat the batter beginning and ending their time at the bat regardless of the count the ball is dead runners cannot advance unless forced section number nine warm up pitches at the beginning of each half inning or when a pitcher relieves another not more than one minute may be used to deliver not more than the three pitches to the catcher or other team member but take note that the exemption this is does not apply if the umpire delays the start or resumption of play due to substitution conference injuries or etc section number 10 no pitch no pitch shall be declared when First is the pitcher pitches during a suspension of play. A runner is good out for leaving his base before the pitch. Ball reaches home plate, is battle, or touches the ground before home plate. In section 11, illegal pitcher. A pitcher who has been declared an illegal pitcher as a result of first is the team exceeding the return. Exceeding the recharge defensive conference limit or pitching with excessive speed may not return to the pitching position at any time for remainder of the game. And so that is the rule number six, the pitching regulations from the fast pitch only. So since we're done discussing the uh, rule number five and six, now let's proceed to rule number seven, the batting. In section one, the one deck batter. First is at the at the start of an inning is the lead off batter who must remain in his on deck circle until called to the batter's box. B once an inning has started is the offensive player who in the batting batting line up is the next player to enter the batter's box that is the rule number seven batting section number one the, the one deck batter in section number two the batting order the batting order of the theme must be on score sheet or lineup card and must be delivered before the game by the manager or or the captain the official scorer of the plate umpire he shall submit it to the inspection of the manager or captain of the opposing team section number three batting position the batter must take his position in the batter's box within 10 seconds after umpire has declared play ball effect from section 3a the umpire shall call a strike Pitch does not need to be thrown and the ball becomes dead. In section number four, a strike is called by the first player, first player only for any part of legal pitch ball for a strike thrown before touching the ground and if the batter do not win to the starting player and leap or illegally pitch for the entering the strike zone before touching the ground and which the batter does not win. In section number four, a strike is called by the umpire. The flex player only when any part of the legal pitch ball enter the strike zone before touching the ground and it which the batter does not swing. So the starting a player only for each legally pitch ball entering the strike zone before touching the ground and which the batter does not swing. In section number 5, a ball is scored by the umpire. So for each legally pitched ball that does not enter the strike zone, or rule number 7, section 4, batting a strike is scored by the umpire. Second is the touches the ground before reaching home plate and it's not swung. Three touches home plate at which the batter does not swing. In section number six, the butter is out. So first, when the third strike is swung at the miss and the ball touches any part of the butter's person, swung at the end pitch ball, 
Second, that is the second that swung and his pitch and hits the batter while the pitch is in the strike zone. Letter B, when a batter enters a batter's box with his or is discovered using an upper bat. But take note that the batter is also ejected from the game. So since we're done discussing the rule number 7, so let's proceed to the rule number 8, batter, runner, and runner. So section number 1, the batter becomes a batter runner when he legally hits fair or foul ball. The flex player only when the catcher fails to catch the third strike before the ball touches the ground and there are less than two outs and first base is unoccupied or there are two outs. This is known as the third strike rule. So kapag sa third strike rule hindi pa rin natamaan, ibig sabihin you are out. In section number 2, from the rule number 8, the batter runner is out. When the catcher grabs the third strike in the batter runner is legally touched with the ball well off base or thrown out prior to teaching first base, then the letter B said that the when a felder legally catches a fly ball before it touches the ground or any object or person other than the offensive player. In section number 3, the batter runner is not out. Said that the when a filler makes a play on a batter runners while using an illegal glove, so the manager or the offended team has the option of. So first is taking the result of the play. Second is having the player resume bat batting. Assuming the ball and strike count prior to the pitch with other runners return to the base held at the time of the pitch. However, section number 4, touching bases in legal order, said that the runners must touch bases in legal order, first, second, third, and home plate. But the exemption, if a runner is obstructed a base preventing the runner from the touching that base. Letter A, when a runner is returning to, he said that the first is the base left before the cough fly ball is first touched or the miss base while the ball is in play. You must touch the ball bases in reverse order. In section number 5, runners are entitled, entitled to advance with liability to be put out. So in flex player only, when the ball leaves the pitcher's hand on the delivery, the starting lineups only said that the when it pitch ball is bad. On a thrown ball is for battle, but that is not blocked. You have also on a thrown ball that it hits an umpire. They said that when a legally caught fly ball is first touched, so when a fair bath ball went. In section number 6, a runner forfeits his exemption from liability to be put out. So if at any time he fails to touch a base, he is entitled to before attempting to make the next base. The exception of this, if a runner obstructed the base preventing the runners from touching the base. In section number 7 said that the runners are entitled to advance without liability to be put out. So first, when forced to vacate and base because of the batters was awarded a base on balls effect in section number 7a, the ball remains in play unless it is blocked. Any runners affected is entitled to one, which it may advance farther at his own risk if the ball is in play. So the starting player only, the ball is dead. In section number 8, a runner must return to his base. A runner must return to his base, yung babalik siya sa kanyang base, but need to touch the intervening bases. No? Diba? Kailangan niya munang uh, Matouch ang intervening bases. When a battle ball is declared foul, when the umpire declares the ball to have been illegally bat, when a bat and last is when a bat, ay, when a battle runner is called out for interference. That is last. <clears throat> Section number nine, the runner is out. 
course is when while running to any base in regular or reverse order he runs more than 0 0.9 to 1 meters or 3 feet from the base path to avoid being touched by the ball in the hands of a fielder. Letter B, when while the ball is playing the hand, he is not the contact B. With the base, he is legally touched with the ball in the hands of a fielder. However, the section 10 said that the runner is not out. So, this is the uh, evidence. When he runs behind or in front of the fielder and outside the base, but in order to avoid interference with the fielder attempting to feel the bat ball in the in the this path so b when he does not run in the direct line to the base provided the fielder in the direct line does not have the ball in his post. so this is the last discussion of the rule number a so i hope uh, may natutunan kayo sa ating discussion about uh, uh, rules of softball from number 5 to number 8. So, the next meeting, we're going to discuss the rules of softball from number 9 to number 12. So, I hope meron kayo natutunan, may naging kayong knowledge, and may narealize tayo sa mga narinig nating mga uh, rules of football ano na sa mga article na to. So, I hope Uh, may mga madadala kayo, may mga ma-realize tayo, may mga magkagamit tayo sa in a future generation. And once again, this is Aljim Dominguez. And I hope uh, nakinig kayo and sana naman may narutunan kayo. So that could be all. Thank you.